Hello, everybody. Students ask me frequently to better explain the reactive power. So in this lesson, I will, I will try to do so. Hopefully, I will be successful. The root cause of reactive power is due to the fact that any conductor on potential is surrounded by an electric field and any wire conducting a current is surrounded by a magnetic field. Both the electric and the magnetic field store energy and thus it needs power to build up these fields. Let's take for example a wire. If I want to carry current through this wire, I have to connect the wire first to a voltage source. In this case it could be a rectangular voltage source. If we now switch on the voltage source, we would see that the current starts to flow through the wire and the current would then start to build up the magnetic field. And the longer we apply the voltage source, the higher the current will be and the stronger the magnetic field would be. So we pump energy into the magnetic field and if we switch off the voltage source to zero, the current is now stored in the wire thanks to the magnetic field and it would just continue to flow. The magnetic field would stay steady at where we left it when we switched the voltage source to zero. In order to reduce the current flowing through the wire, I would have to take back the energy which is now stored in the magnetic field. So we need to apply a negative voltage source with reverse polarity in order to be able to decrease the current until there is zero again. If I continue to apply my negative voltage source, the current would continue to flow but just in the other direction now. And so does the magnetic field. It would turn around the wire in the other direction. So we have just demonstrated that no energy is lost. The energy is pumped from the source into the wire. In the wire it is stored in terms of magnetic energy. And uh, so the, the energy is oscillating between the magnetic field and the source back and forth. You could see how this looks like in a continuous mode. The same thing which I just explained for the magnetic field is also applicable for the electric field around the wire. Here, however, instead of a rectangular voltage source, I would apply a rectangular current source. Otherwise, the mechanism is the same. I apply my rectangular current source and then the voltage between the wire and earth is increasing. And then I stop my current source and then the voltage would be stored in the electric field between the wire and the earth surface and in order to decrease the electric field i would have to reverse the current flow and you see what happens the same thing as with the magnetic field so the power needed for building up and reversing the polarity of the magnetic and electric field at each half cycle is called reactive power no voltage will be built up anywhere, nor will current flow anywhere without this reactive power. This reactive power is oscillating back and forth between, between the wire or any capacitor or inductor and the source. The relation between the current and the rate of change of the voltage is called capacitance. And the relation between the voltage and the rate of change of the current is called inductance. Typically, the reactance of a wire is around 1 millihenry per kilometer. The capacitance of a wire is around 10 nanofarad per kilometer. It is clear that it's not only wires who provide capacitance and inductances. There is also cable, which have a much, much higher capacitance per meter. And there are full bulk capacitors, as well as reactors, motors, transformers, who have much higher capacitance values and inductance values. So far, I have been using a rectangular source. I have now replaced my rectangular source by a sinusoidal voltage source. You can also see the effect of the energy storage in the wire. You can see that the current, the green curve, is 90 degrees phase shifted with the voltage source. And this is the typical effect of reactive power. Here is a very simple circuit. It's a 220 kV circuit with a reactor and a resistance. Looking at the reactor in the circuit, I see that the current is lagging the voltage and that the red curve, which is the power, it's the reactive power, is swinging back and forth between the reactor and the source. Phase shift between the current and the voltage is exactly 90 degrees 
and you also see that the power is the voltage times the current and as long as both are positive the power is positive and as soon as one of both gets negative the power shifts to negative and vice versa. If now however I'm looking at the resistor it's different there is no phase shift between the voltage and the current and you always say that the power is only going in one direction it is oscillating but it is not staying on the positive side of the graph only it is not swinging back and forth between the resistor and the source here i'm looking at both at the sum of the read and the reactive power this sum is called apparent power and you see that there is now a phase shift between the current and the voltage trace so this is the voltage the blue one the current is the green one but it is not any more 90 degrees it is much less you see that only a part of the power is swinging back and forth this is the part which is passing negative here so this corresponds to this top part of the curve this part is still swinging back and forth but the rest is then active power if i'm now looking at the phase diagram of the circuit i see that the voltage current and the power at the resistor are sitting on, on each other there is no phase shift at the reactor however the voltage and the current have a 90 degrees phase shift the current is lagging the reactive power at the reactor has a 90 degrees phase shift uh, to the voltage this is per definition because the reactor is consuming reactive power so it's positive here i'm now looking at the sum of the reactive power and the real power you see this is the real power this is the reactive power and this is the sum of it you see that the phase shift between the voltage the blue curve and the current the green arrow is the same as the phase shift between the real power and the apparent power the phase angle between the real power and the apparent power is this phi and the cosine phi is the power factor the power factor therefore is the relation between the real power and the apparent power and this is equal to this cosine phi as long as my resistance is large compared to the reactor i see that i have mainly real power in the system whereas when i decrease my resistance i see that i more and more get into the reactive power mode here are the most important components which cause large amount of reactive power in power systems. Uh, first of all, long transmission lines, then motors, transformers, reactors, capacitor banks and generators. Inductive and capacitive sources of reactive power can compensate each other. Hopefully I better manage to explain what is behind reactive power. It's not at all useless as many think. In AC circuits there is no power flowing without reactive power. Finally, learning by doing is best. Go to the simulator, it is under this address here, and there you can build up your own circuits and play around with it.